Good morning, everybody. Here I am, fresh out of the shower, and I uh, wanted to do a quick video before I ran off and did errands today. Um, this is Pow Barabajagle reporting. I um, went with my friend Dave yesterday to a uh, rummage sale at a church. Uh, he is a record picker who is on um, oh, mailing lists for lots of local sales when they have annual sales and uh, this rummage sale he's been to a number of times in the past they haven't had it for several years because of covid so this is the first one in a long time and the postcard has a warning that there's not going to be as many books and things because they were closed and weren't accepting donations for a while so um it was interesting they started to they let people in at 5 30 p.m on a thursday and then it continues i think through the weekend or at least through tomorrow and saturday but um you know books are a larger component than records at this sale and he said in the past they didn't have vinyl at all till he talked to the people who ran the sale and said you might want to accept donations of vinyl because it's coming back and you could make some money off it. So they've listened to him and they're, you know, he's friendly with all these record, uh, I mean, uh, rummage sale people and they remember him and he uh, was pleased to find that they decided to take him up on it the past couple times. So there were records there. I went and told him I'm just going to go for some bargain CDs, but I'll, I enjoy going along with him. And then he gets stuff usually for resale. So before the sale started, we all lined up. We got there uh, like an hour and a half, two hours before uh, they opened. So we'd get the f first spot in the line. We were up there with the first oh, 10 people and everybody else were book uh dealers ahead of us rather than record dealers. And apparently Dave was telling me that especially estate sales around Seattle, they have to take a number and do a list and it is really, really competitive and kind of cutthroat. And he said, it's really been nice to move away from Seattle and not have to deal with that with the smaller estate sales he goes to. But usually church rummage sales are less um, competitive. So yeah, um, we it didn't rain until after we were leaving, which was nice because we stood out there and being in the rain would have been annoying, but I guess that's happened in the past. When we got there, there wasn't much of a line, but there was a good line down the block by the time they were opening. We got in there first to the records, and they also said they have an air, a showroom area where there were going to be more expensive things, and they told him there was one record that was more expensive than the others. So he made the decision to go check that out afterwards and go to the cheap records first, which was interesting because when he went to uh, the cheap records, he found a nearly... Uh, oh, like a near mint or mint minus vinyl uh, mono copy of Meet the Beatles in the cheap records for, you know, I think it was $2. And then in their expensive showroom, they had a sealed copy of John Lennon's Imagine. So actually, his find was, you know, worth more than the copy of Imagine that he missed that somebody bought for $15. I mean, both are cool to have, but I think he made the right decision. And he found an Allen Ginsberg album. Uh, Allen Ginsberg reads William Blake, which I'd never seen, so who knows what that one's worth. I'm sure somebody could look it up out there. And, you know, about... 10 or 12 other albums. There weren't a lot of records. It was probably you know, 100, 150 records to go through. And then the CDs, they're about that much as well, maybe 200 to go through. But I got a good stack of stuff. And most of what I got was uh, kind of either collections or um, 
you know, some less popular albums or world music or jazz, something that I wouldn't normally pick up, but I'm going to pick it up for a dollar and check it out. So here's my show off on what I got. Let's see. First, there was a box set. I got this nice Aretha Franklin box set, four CDs on Rhino for six dollars. Um, the discs are have some kind of smudges on them, but they look like there aren't scratches. I think they're perfectly playable. Really nice um, collection. I think it's all Atlantic Records, um, and it looks like, uh, did it come out in 1992? I think so. So I have some Aretha Franklin on Atlantic uh, LPs and a couple of CDs, and I have a couple Aretha Franklin collections but this is really nice this will definitely have some things i don't have and i was glad to find that i mean the booklet's great you know has essays by dave marsh and various record critics and whoever in it so typical quality package from rhino for six bucks you know uh there were also dvds there i just barely went through the dvds but i got a copy of the life of brian which was kind of funny because somebody at the church was asking me what it was about. <laughs> I said, oh, it's a Monty Python movie. And he's like, that's not one I ever saw. So it was kind of funny. Um, I also got Bruce Springsteen live in Dublin. And this is uh, like the Pete Seeger um, performances. So that the session with the sessions band. So this was from 2006, uh, favorites from the Seeger sessions and then Springsteen songs and rare songs. So I'm not a huge Springsteen fan, but I like kind of some of his offbeat stuff. I like Nebraska. I like some of his, you know, the classic early albums, especially I like the first album a lot. So that's a good thing to throw in the random batch of Springsteen albums I have. I bought one vinyl album for two dollars, Farron's Shadows on the Dime. I'm a fan of Farron. She's uh, oh like a women's music lesbian songwriter who sounds very Bob Dylan-ish, is really has really good lyrics. Um, this album's from 1984. I like I have a vinyl copy of her album Testimony too and I used to have a tape with both Testimony and Shadows on the Dime on it. I know I have this on CD, but it's nice to find, you know, a mint record with a gatefold and all the lyrics, and it's on the label Lucy, and it's mint, so she's Canadian too, so very glad to get that. I saw her once in concert. Oh, not too long ago, 10 years ago or something. Then I've got my stack. Oh, I also bought this for $4. Got a record crate, which I can use right now. Um, and it was handy to carry the stuff out of there with. And then I have all these CDs, so let's go through them. I got a mint double Doors collection. And it's weird, right now I don't have any Doors albums. And this is a nice collection. I don't know if it can focus here. But it's not in chronological order. It's just a good playlist. Um, came out, oh no, my eyes, uh, 2007 on Rhino. You know, good old Rhino. I also got a collection. Let's see. There's another collection. I got a Stevie Wonder songs re song review greatest hits. So this is a little more latter day, you know, there's the stuff like part-time lover and I just called to say I love you on it, but then, you know, Superstition, Sir Duke, My Sharia Moore, Ebony and Ivory, uh, so re a cover of Redemption Song by Bob Marley, um, so yeah, it's, you know, okay Stevie Wonder collection from, uh, looks like, Sorry, i got to get in the light. 1996 Motown. That's okay for a dollar. I got a very recent James Taylor album. 
that I don't know at all. I'm not a huge James Taylor fan either, but, you know, American Standard, I'm willing to check that out. Kind of looks like it's a bunch of um, covers, so probably like, like a nice spare covers album of old-time music. Pennies from Heaven, God Bless the Child, Old Man River, you know, stuff like that. Then he shows a bunch of acoustic guitars on the back, so I'm expecting kind of a low-key um, nostalgia-type album. And what year is this? This is... Uh-oh. 2020! Yeah, that's good. One dollar. I don't have any Pat Metheny, and there was this Pat Metheny album there, which is one of these things where I'm sure the first three letters say Pat, and then the lower line is supposed to be Metheny, but it's all in hieroglyphics. But it's something like uh, This Imaginary Days. Let me pull out the booklet, because once you finally get past all the hieroglyphics, you might actually find some English words. Um, Imaginary Day is the name of the album. And, yeah, I don't have much jazz. I definitely don't have much more kind of fusion modern jazz. Most of what I tend to pick up is either old historic 30s, 40s kind of some thing, swing, or um, some bebop or uh, 50s kind of stuff. And then, but you know, for a dollar and a major artist, I'm going to check it out. Um, yeah, this is what year? I think it's something like 1996. Yeah, sorry I'm being slow, but I, I believe it's mid-90s or maybe early 2000s. But nice package, the CD's in good shape. A local artist, someone there recommended to me, Laura Love. So uh, she's a local songwriter. Um, she has the Laura Love Band. And just, you know... When there's somebody there who's saying this person's really good, she's a friend of mine, blah, 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 I'm going to check her out. Um, then there were a couple Rye Cooter oriented releases and the Chieftains. So there was this Chieftains album. Now, I'm the first Chieftains album I ever had was one that was with Van Morrison. And this appears to be... Uh, a Chieftains album where they're collaborating with a bunch of different artists. So there's a song with Sting, with Mick Jagger, Sinead O'Connor, Van Morrison, Mark Knopfler, Ry Cooter, um, Tom Jones, and the Stones. So, and Marianne Faithball too. So definitely something that'd be more accessible to somebody like me as far as the Chieftains Irish folk goes. And then here's a Chieftains and Ry Cooter album that uh, is uh, San, oh no, my eyes, sorry, San Patrico. And this appears to be like a lot of uh, Latin American music and ballads um, where uh, they're, they've got, uh, you know, probably Linda Ronstadt, um, other people who are definitely more Latin musicians, plus lots of Rye Cooter. So, you know, that sounds cool. I'm up for that. Um, Rye Cooter is also on this uh, Talking Timbuktu with Ali Farka Ture, this album. There's a tab up here that I need to take this tape off. Um, and it's got somebody's signature on the top of the album who previously owned it. But yeah, very... Oh, 1994. And a Ladysmith Black Mombazo album. 
so I was really kind of hitting the folk world music this time. Out of Africa, World Beat Africa. And that's a comp. So that has, um, I can't ever say his name, Yasuo Nadur, who I know is a major African uh, artist. I, I think I might have an album by him as well. He's played with Peter Gabriel. Speaking of Peter Gabriel, there was this, which is on his real world label, uh, Ovo. Um, I believe that's mainly an instrumental album of his, like The Passion and Birdie, the soundtrack. So that's not one I've ever had or heard. Uh, there was also in the children's section, David Grisman and Jerry Garcia, not for kids only. So I know that's supposed to be good. That's uh, Jerry Garcia and David Grisman doing kind of kid-related songs. Um, and Songs and More Songs by Tom Lehrer. Found that also on Rhino. So this was... Uh, I don't see a year, but I'm assuming it's mid-60s originally. More of Tom Lehrer... Um, orchestrated editions, yeah, songs, you know, it's got like Poisoning Pigeons in the Park, which is the main one I know by Tom Lehrer, so comedy, songwriting, early folk, people should know who that is. Uh, speaking of folk, I got a Pentangle album there on uh, Shanna, I can't ever say that either, Shanna, Shanachi Records which um, I have various English folk albums uh, like Steel Eye Span and oh, other people from Pentangle and uh, the other early English folk and 60s folk scene. That's, that's something you often find at uh, big sales of like half price books or other places or, uh, you know, more folk and more um, blues. I was kind of surprised I didn't really find any blues albums there this time. Got a Flogging Molly album, uh, so Irish rock, uh, Within a Mile of Home is this one, and what year is this? Oh, sorry, I can't see, but it seems like it's pretty recent. I'm going to guess mid-90s onward, 2000s possibly. Anyway, that'll be my first Flogging Molly album. They had a Death Cab for Cutie album, so that's cool. Not one I have. Now I'm up to three Death Cab for Cutie albums. This is We Have the Facts and We're Voting Yes. And if you don't know them, they're uh, from my area. They're, uh, I believe, a Bellingham, Washington band. Very pop, um, but alternative indie pop. And fan of a lot of 60s bands I like. So yeah, kind of excited to get that, too. And let's see, the last thing I got was a double collection of Ray Charles. Um, the definitive Ray Charles. Really looks like a good collection. Of course, he has so many recordings. So... It's on Rhino. Um, it's got the Atlantic symbol, so it's probably a collection of the Atlantic years, which, you know, is very classic era for him in the 60s and early, I mean, late 50s. Yeah, I think that I did pretty good. I think I spent a total of right around $30 because that uh, crate was $4, the LP was $2. The DVDs each were $2. So then the records, I think I have something like 21 or 22 CDs here, plus the $6 box set. So I'm in the $30 to $35 range I blew there. I think that's, I did well. Anyway, have a good day. Um, hope you guys get a chance to go to some kind of sale like that at some point and really score. Take care. Bye.